I explain my outfit. Uh, my name is Gio. And, uh, um, I was just told to wear a Henley. And some of them why it's a, uh, it's a thing. It's a thing. Apparently, so this is a Henley shirt. But, hello, someone uh, pick that up. <laughs> uh, but I pick normally, apparently, Henleys are my big single color. But I picked the, what's this called? Raglan type. As in, I, I don't own a Henley. When Mina asked me to wear a Henley, I had to, I had to go around and shop for a Henley. But it was hard because if you want the Raglan type, it's, it's very uncommon. So I had to look for one. But, and I did. Thank you for your service. Thank you. So good. Benda? <laughs> I'm Salve and I'm supposed to be Lara Jean. That. <laughs> Does everyone know who Larry Jean is? Yes! Pag mayroong hindi may alam dito, grabe kayo. Don't speak for everyone. Pero ako yun, si Larry Jean. We grew up together. Okay. So, eto na. <laughs> One night in the streets of Makati. <laughs> by Bianca Mori. <laughs> the registration tables outside the ballroom were unmanned and strewn with sign-up sheets and various paper hats. Fedoras, children's party cones, even one with a little propeller at the crown. Hats off to the holidays. Cora murmured, reading the sign-up sheet. She put on the cardboard fedora and Stephen followed with a propeller hat. It suits you, she grinned. If anyone asks, we're from Region 4 Marketing, none of whom signed up here. She replaced the sign-up sheets. And I'll be making sure all Seattle group parties do their registration online. This is such a security risk. He gave her an incredulous look as she burst out laughing. Come on, soup waits for no one. It was mayhem inside. The party had clearly been going on for a while now. A show band was playing a blistering cover of a Bruno Mars hit. And the dance floor was packed with people in top hats, flower crowns, wedding veils, and striped Dr. Seuss hats. The few tables that were still occupied were laden with half-empty bottles of beer and shot glasses. A crowd near the ballroom's east side mobbed a mobile bar. Cora shrieked, pulling Stephen to the buffet table. She grabbed a bowl and ladled it from the soup barrel. Oh my god, it smells like roasted pumpkin! She moaned, then balanced the small plate on her other hand to load it with various antipasti. They settled into an empty table, furthest from the stage, where it was dark and the noise manageable. A waiter handed them utensils and glasses of iced tea. Cora attacked her soup with relish. She savored every bite, closing her eyes and making little sounds of pleasure that made it hard for him to think. <laughs> Literally. He concentrated on his own bowl, but he couldn't taste anything. His thoughts were focused on what her lips would taste like if he leaned over to kiss her now. Sweet like pumpkin, perhaps, and an underlying flavor that was all her own. Mm. But she said, mopping up the last bits of soup with a dinner roll. I'm so glad we did this. Save soup from being wasted? Uh-huh. We helped it fulfill its destiny. It's home now. She patted her stomach dreamily. He was so charmed by the sight that his mouth got away from him again. I'd never think a girl like you would care so much about wasted soup. Her face hardened, and he instantly regretted opening his stupid mouth. Really? And how is a girl like me supposed to act? He hoped to get away with not answering her question, but her dark eyes pinned his gaze. I'm sorry, Cora. I didn't mean- No, Stephen, you did. You have assumptions about me, so let's have it out. His ears were on fire. I only meant that, um, you know, having so much, uh- Money? Yeah. <laughs> money that, um, that I thought that it wouldn't be a big deal to you if, um, you know, a tiny bit of it went to waste. She straightened in her seat and leveled him a cool glare. What do you know about my father, Stephen? Your- your father, um... My father had to quit school and work when he was 16 to make sure his four siblings were able to finish. They were orphaned, you know. 
Some nights were so bad, all they had to eat was salt and rice. He swallowed hard, feeling monumentally stupid. When my sister and I were young and we didn't finish our rice, he would have a fit. He would tell us, do you know how hard it is to harvest rice? And then he would go into detail. We couldn't leave the table until he took us from planting and irrigation and all the way to harvest, where farmers would take whatever cash they made from that season's take and use it to pay off all the debts they accumulated in the previous months. Without the harvest, they didn't have any cash. Can you imagine not having any cash? He'd ask. Then he'd end with, how do you think those farmers would feel knowing you're throwing away those little greens they nearly kill themselves growing? I'm sorry, Cara. Really, I didn't know. Lots of people don't know, but they assume they do. She reached up and pulled off the cardboard fedora. They think because I was born rich, everything was handed to me on a silver platter. Do you know what my first job out of college was? He shook his head. I was a trainee at a pharmaceutical. My father said, go work for another company, and if you're good enough to get promoted there, then you're good enough to work for me. He only asked me to join Siasha when I became assistant manager. She took a shaky sip of iced tea. When I told you I was an heiress and that all of Siasha Group was going to be mine, you told me you were sorry. Why was that? He shrugged. I just thought it was a huge responsibility handling all of that. You know, just a lot to take on. I would be scared shitless if it were me. She laughed, a sudden harsh exhale, and then her face crumpled into tears. Oh God, how am I doing this? I always say the wrong things. He ran his hand through his hair and then pulled her against his chest. Shit, you know, I'm sorry. Do you want to be hugged? <laughs> you don't, do you? Her silent sobs turned into shaking laughter, her own arms wrapped around him. Are, uh, are, are you alright? He asked, rubbing her back. You nailed it. She laughed softly against his chest. That's how I feel. Scared shitless. She drew back from him and dabbed at her eyes. Most people assume I'm thrilled to control Siata Group, that I can't wait to be so powerful. She made spooky spirit fingers at the last word. But you get me, don't you, Steven? You don't always say the right things, but you do. No more boundaries now? He guessed. She parted her lips to reply when a girl approached their table, holding a bucket of colorful test tubes on ice. Cora accepted a red tube with genuine amusement. <laughs> what is this? Stephen wrinkled his nose at the blue liquid in his test tube. Cora downed hers with one gulp and made a face. Woo! What the hell? Stephen followed. Ah! <laughs> that tasted like pure gin. Cora stood and grabbed his arm. Come on, let's dance! They reached the dance floor. The band had finished their set and a DJ was now on stage spinning hard EDM that was whooping the crowd into a frenzy under the crazy spinning lights. <laughs> Cora laughed, kicked, kicked off her heels, and plunged into the throng. <laughs> Stephen followed. The crowd was so thick they were pushed against each other. He felt every undulation as she moved her hips and shoulders to the music. She spun beneath his hands and swung her head, moving her body like a wave that crashed into him. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed again and wrapped her arms around his neck. He let his forehead drop to hers as their bodies heaved against each other. Their hips collided and her mouth dropped to his lips. Breath away. God. He wanted to kiss her. His hands tightened around her waist as he mastered his control. She leaned in and kissed him anyway. One night in the streets of the castle. <laughs> <laughs>